This is Robert at Merit Web Project, and uh, today I'm going to respond to a request um, made by a couple people, and um, this is going to be a video about how to use Quick Test effectively, and that's probably what it's going to be titled: uh, using Quick Test effectively. And um, what I want to do, what I've been requested to do, is take you through what I see as the logical progression of using the Merit Web Project um, with Quick Test as its base. Um, and you know, there may be another video associated with this or not. I'm not really sure, but um, this is the first uh, first one that needs to be done. Anytime somebody comes into your office for the first time, you should have already sent them um, quick test by remote assessment, or you should give it to them right then and there. It takes between five and ten minutes for them to take it. No reason for you not to have the information um, that quick test gives you. So your initial contact with individuals should be uh, to administer quick test to them. Based on what they've come in for and what those results show, you've got a couple different paths you can take. I suggest that you give them a PSA, um, even if quick test is not elevated, and look for the longer term, more stable personality indicators in that person's life. Um, that is something you can use remote assessment for. Look that up. Um, how to administer the, the using remote assessment. Um, you can send them an email. They can take it at home. Um, take it on a tablet. They can take it on their phone if the phone screen is big enough. Uh, they can take it on a computer at home, laptop. Doesn't matter, desktop, whatever. Uh, whatever gets to the internet is what they can use to to take the assessment if you send it to them in a remote way. Um, so quick test and then PSA before you meet with them again. If anything is elevated on quick test, you've got to give them quick test again. It takes five to ten minutes for them to do it. They should do it before they come in. Send it to them the day before or two days before and look for the change. On the screen you see what happens um, when you look at multiple um, results. It's a 10, ten time administration over a period of a month and this is what we're looking at. Um, you can see exactly what's going on with this person. It's almost medical in the way it looks. Um, if a person has issues with the PSA, the quick test is elevated, you're going to want to take this a little farther. You need to do home of origins. You need to do an anger assessment, probably. It's probably a good idea just to see where they're at. And you need to do ADS, the Addictions and Dependency Scale. Um, these three all show up included uh, in summary form in the PSA results. So they're going to be built right in there. You might see codependency, you might see an addiction, uh, you might see an obsessive behavior, compulsive behavior, um, food, sex, religion, whatever uh, else they might be. Um, they might be using as some kind of a crutch. Um, anger, you're looking for latent anger, um, anger that you really don't know about immediately. Um, all that kind of stuff will come out. So your initial counseling sessions should be for the purpose of lowering the quick test scores, the anxiety and the depression. You can use the built-in treatment protocols or use your own. doesn't matter, either one. But if you need some direction, look at the treatment protocols. They're in the quick test results. We know that. We go over here. We look at this. And uh, down this list right here, 
uh, protocols for anxiety, depression, potential for self-harm, they're all here. Use those if you, if you need to, if you want to. Um, the first effort in counseling <coughs> should be to lower uh, both anxiety and depression. And, of course, potential for self-harm, the personal safety score. Um, once those are all lowered, like you see here on the screen, they're all below the, the green line, which means they're all in a safe scoring range. Um, a person who came in with elevations in the PSA, elevations in quick test, in some form of crisis, once uh, the quick test scores are, are like this, um, it doesn't mean that that uh, counseling is over. It means it's time to start counseling. You have now put out the fire. You now need to look for the cause of the fire. That's going to be in the PSA scores with uh, some additional um, explanations through uh, looking at addictions, home of origin, anger issues, all of those things now you can begin to deal with now that anxiety and depression are done. If you simply put out anxiety and depression, get them down so that they look like this right here, and then send them on their way and tell them they're all fixed, what's going to happen is um, whatever it is will come back again because you haven't dealt with the root of it. Anxiety and depression potential for self-harm are nothing more than symptoms of something that is underlying. These other tools will help you discover what is underlying. Now, of course, there are other tools that you can use um, as, as aids, uh, defense mechanisms, um, some of the report writing features in this program are extremely helpful and very powerful. You need to be taking session notes. Every time you do a session, you need to take a session note. It is, it, it is going to get you in trouble if something happens and you get called out with that client. It's not going to look good if you don't have any record of what you did with them. Make sure you record all of their drugs um, and look up those drugs. A lot of them are in the database already, and there are fact sheets that come up. And make sure that you diagnose the person. Now, working on the DSM-5 as of the 19th of January, 2017, um, but it's going to be a little bit before that gets in. Still, you need to um, diagnose a person. Um, go back and use the DSM-4 or whatever. I know that's not going to get you insurance money, but a lot of people here don't claim insurance. It's important to know a diagnosis for a person because that will help you understand how to treat them. If you don't know what they have, um, then, uh, you know, it's, it's like going to a doctor and the doctor says, well, it doesn't matter what your symptoms are, I'm just going to treat you. Well, what are you going to do for me? Well, I'm going to give you this and this and this drug and I'm going to do this procedure. Well, that has nothing to do with the way I feel. Oh, well, that's what I'm going to do. What's his problem? Well, his problem is he didn't diagnose you, so he doesn't know what to do with you. He's just going to throw stuff. You can't do that. Without an accurate diagnosis, you shouldn't be treating the person. And that goes along with uh, problem identification, and the thing that it's coupled with, which is a treatment plan. If you don't have a plan how you're going to treat the person, you will suffer if there's ever any need to call you into court. The first thing they're going to want to do is see your treatment plan. Anybody who accepts insurance understands the first thing that they want to know before they ever pay you for anything What's wrong with this person? What is their problem? 
and how are you going to help fix that problem? Client problem identification and a treatment plan associated with, connected to that particular uh, client problem. If you don't have those, you're practicing in a very, very, very dangerous way. And uh, someday it may come back to get you, and then you can't go back and fix it. No need to go there. And I can tell you, when you do have a treatment plan, an effective treatment plan in place, it makes counseling much easier because that treatment plan forces you to create a number of different steps that you're going to take to help the person resolve their issues. When you get done with step number one, you go to step number two, then three, then four, then five. When you get done, you say, oh, okay, we've, we've accomplished what we needed to accomplish. That process also flushes out other problems if they exist. It is the fastest, most effective way to counsel a person and to help them through whatever the trials are. So anyway, the first order of business is quick test. Quick test should be administered up to four times. Once a person reaches this level that you see on the screen right here where everything is below the green line, four more times after that just to make sure they don't spike back up and to make sure that the drop below 115 wasn't... Uh, um, just a fluke for a week. You want them down below 115 for four sessions. And explain to the client that um, quick test changes on a very regular basis. Changes daily. can change uh, in the same day with a phone call from someone. And it can spike up or drop person might have extreme anxiety because of a financial situation. They get a phone call that um, they're going to be able to get the money they need. You would see an immediate drop in their anxiety score or the depression score, whatever score was elevated. So we're going to wrap this up now and um, think about some of the, the tips that I've given you about how to use the system. And there may be more about this uh, later in, uh, in uh, other videos.